Shadiverse. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I want to discuss with you what type of weapons would best suit someone with. Happened again. Hmm. I want to discuss with you what weapons would suit someone who had superhuman speed, okay, the weapons that will suit the most, and what weapons would benefit more from super speed. So one of the first things that we need to kind of figure out is how fast, <laughs> because like in terms of pop culture, there's fast and then there is light speed fast. Fast. Uh, and the other thing is, like, so with super speed, invariably it comes with certain tangential enhancements as well. For instance, greater strength. Now, it's in different applications because speed and strength, honestly, in pop culture, are very misunderstood things. I've dedicated several videos already addressing how strength applies, and really, like strength, when you think of the amount of force you can produce with your muscles, what you're really able to create is a huge amount of pressure, not necessarily forces on impact, okay? If you want to develop huge force on impact, you need momentum. Momentum is a result of a combination of velocity and mass. Increase one of those two things, or both, and you'll increase your momentum force on impact. Super strength is not super speed. It doesn't really do that. It would increase your speed mildly, but not huge amounts. Yet, we're not looking at super strength. We're looking at super speed. And super speed is exactly one of those properties that would enable you, like whoever has this, to create massive amounts of force, dependent on the speed that they're able to move at. And what now needs to be like brought into the discussion is uh, how durable is the person who has this superpower? Because if they have the same durability as a regular person and they can throw a punch at twice the speed of a regular person, all right, I think you know the human body would be able to handle perhaps twice the speed. But if you're going up to four times, five times, ten times the speed, the amount of force you're actually producing is huge and you would shatter your hand, your arm, your bro, like it would be a mess. Remember, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, okay? Whatever force you're imparting onto whatever you're punching, you're imparting that same impact onto your hand and fist, okay? The reason why we punch is that we structure our bone structure and our fist in such a way that it can handle and absorb that force much easier than say that if we apply that same force onto our nose. That's quite a lot, but we can withstand it, hold a lot on our fist. But ramping it up, there's problems. So with super speed, invariably, you always, like the, the person, uh, it would make sense to give them a certain measure of durability on top of this. Now, someone like Superman is built perfectly for this because he's essentially invulnerable, and so his super speed suits him quite a lot. But someone like the Flash, I mean, I, the Flash, to my understanding, uh, look, I should double check this, but I'll say it and then double check it and correct myself if I'm wrong. To my understanding, a bullet can kill him. Now let's quickly go double check this. <laughs> Interesting. All right. So with the Flash specifically, it kind of depends on his reaction to his reflexes because he might feel the tickle of the bullet. Because remember, to him, if he wants, everything around him can be like slowed down, moving in slow motion. And so as soon as the bullet even starts to move some of the tiny hairs above his skin, if he feels that tickle, he could move out of the way of the bullet. Uh, but that's still reacting and is moving in relation to the incoming bullet, which seems to imply in my mind that his actual physical structure is vulnerable to a bullet, which kind of puts him on the same physical durability as a regular human, if not a very high, you know, performing human. Ah, uh, well, look, he can catch bullets, apparently. So <laughs> this isn't a video about a flash. But simply put, durability and super speed are two, you know, very important things that need to be considered. Because if the flash wasn't, didn't have possess some measure of superhuman durability and he tried to punch someone with his super speed, he would turn his bones and his arms into dust in relation to how fast he can move. So, yeah, things to consider. But we're supposed to be talking about weapons, which we are. This is kind of laying the groundwork, okay? So I'm going to try and uh, approach this analysis with uh, two levels of super speed, like, say, double speed. So it's not, it's clearly superhuman. They can move fast, but not so fast that they're a blur. They're just a lot faster. Because seriously, if you can just move twice as fast as a regular human, your, your reaction times, the speed in which you can move your limbs from a standstill to into motion, that's huge. Twice as fast. I mean, and already people can move their hands pretty darn quick. You know, the hand is faster than the eye. Is that, is that the saying? The hand is quicker than the eye. I'm pretty sure it's the saying. Interesting question to pose right here is, are there certain weapons that would benefit from greater speed like this as opposed to other weapons? 
And, you know, it's funny, any weapon, no matter what, any weapon at all, would be benefited from someone who can move twice as fast as a regular person. Though, having said that, there are certain weapons that would benefit more than other weapons. Speed, mass equals momentum, which means force on impact, all right? Now, weapons operate on producing forces, imparting one to a person that you want to injure, inflicting injury. But how these forces are inflicted varies on the type of weapon, because you generally have different types of, well, uh, striking, basically. So you've got blunt, blunt force, all right? You have piercing and you have cutting. And this is any type of cutting, slashing, hacking, cuts, well, I can, putting all together, I'm just gonna refer to the cutting right now. Each one of these things deals with force kind of differently. You see, with a blunt impact weapon, like a club, even a mace, now, maces can vary depending if they have spikes on them or not, because if they have spikes, well, it changes. And there's another element I'm going to get to a bit later in regards to the weight of the weapon as well, because speed and weight, yeah. So anyway, all right, if it's a blunt weapon, that means when the force hits, it's dispersed over a larger area. If you can swing it harder, which means faster in this instance, it's still going to do a lot more damage. But there are weapons that focus that force onto a smaller surface area, in my opinion, they are using that force in a much more efficient manner. And if you can increase the force, it's gonna have a greater effect. And so anything that is piercing, so like, again, swinging something with blunt force, okay? If you're swinging a sword with the same amount of force, that's now focused in on a very fine edge because Cutting works by pressure, pressure on small surface area. The smaller that surface area, the edge of the blade, the deeper you'll be able to force apart material, okay? It's actually pressure pushing down, forcing apart materials, which is what cutting is. And so in my opinion, you would be able to inflict far more devastating injury using the greater force you're able to produce with greater speed with a bladed implement than a blunted implement. So in my opinion, blades are already better than blunted ones. So you wouldn't really be using a mace or even a quarter staff or anything that uses blunt force and this applies once again with thrusting. So thrusting and cutting they would benefit from the greater speed and forces much more than blunt weapons. Now would you want one over the other? Well it kind of depends. Uh, this is the classic uh, debate between thrusting and cutting which is superior. Uh, generally thrusting can inflict like devastating lethal wounds easier than cutting but if you can you know strike with twice the speed, there's a much higher chance that you will kill someone, you know, when they're just cutting in half than a thrust, and the cut has better stopping power generally than a thrust, and usually cuts are more survivable because uh, you have things you need to get through, like bone and rib cages, but if you're able to strike with much greater force because of speed, I think cuts actually would come above thrust because greater stopping power and you can offend like more than one person with a wide swinging slash in a single pointed directed thrust. Now in terms of cutting you're not just limited to swords okay you have weapons that are far greater at hacking and cutting the swords like axes right and then bigger pole arms and things but the sword has unique advantages in terms of the cutting ratio and its versatility. And I actually think having greater superhuman speed would help overcome some of the sword's limitations. Like for instance, super speed, greater force, that means it could cut easily as effective as an ax now. And with greater cutting ratio, more versatility, it kind of brings it higher, you know, above other certain weapons. And, and of course, swords can thrust as well. And so if you want the option to just do really fast thrusts, that's pretty good. Yet we come back into the question of how much strength does super speed give, okay? Now, obviously, it's a certain measure of increased strength because you're able to accelerate your own body faster because your body has mass, it has weight, and so it requires more force to move it faster than normal, which means greater strength in that sense. But does that greater strength translate to when you're holding a weapon, okay? Because if you're holding a weapon, it weighs the same, and so if you want to accelerate the weapon twice as fast as you would regularly, you need to be able to apply twice as much force on the weapon to strike with it. So, uh, look, obviously super speed has to give a measure of super strength, and we can assume it does it can do this weapons aren't too heavy especially swords but there would certainly be a limit all right and depending on the level of vulnerability they have can they be crushed by things uh, the general understanding is that super speed people superhumans whatever 
are not as strong or invulnerable as people with super strength. So um, questions to consider. If the person with super speed is uh, more limited in terms of the strength that they have, and they have trouble accelerating the weapon on top of just accelerating their own body, for instance, say the super speed comes from time manipulation instead of genetically altering the makeup of someone's body. That means their actual strength is the same, they're just moving at a different time frequency to the other. Now, if they're moving at it, does that mean the things they're holding are pulled into the same time frame that they're operating in? Because if the weapon isn't, they can move twice as fast, apparently because they're in a different time range or whatever, but the weapon isn't, so that means they wouldn't have the strength to accelerate the weapon as fast as they're able to move. So if they have some types of limitations in regards to the strength they have due to the types of super speed they have, well that means they might actually want lighter weapons, lighter swords, short swords, even daggers perhaps? All interesting things to consider. Now, a swordsman with twice the speed of a regular human would be devastating, okay? Hugely powerful if they can run twice as fast. That's pretty darn vicious. Now, are there instances where they'd want to attack by running past someone? If you can run twice as fast as a regular human, you're running as fast as a horse easily, I'd say. Maybe even a bit faster sometimes. And so if you can run towards someone, strike them, and pass them, and they, you know, can't, you can't be pursued then, you would want a weapon in which you can strike and then withdraw from the opponent quite easily. And there are certain advantages to having a curved sword in regards to this, because when you strike, you can just draw that blade along the opponent. Opponent. Now, you can kind of do that with straight swords. In inverse one, you'd run into more difficulty, but straight swords, you can kind of do that. It's just a curved sword helps out with that, and if you can cut someone and drawing that blade on along the full length of the edge, you could do some pretty devastating cuts. So the sword really is coming out on top amongst other weapons in this discussion, and there'd be variants depending on how the super speed really operates, but we've just been looking at someone who can move twice as fast as a regular human. What if they can move almost blindingly fast, a blur, okay? Now, how fast is that? It always varies, because like a flash is, he can, he is supposed to be able to move at the speed of light, and if he's moving at the speed of light, that's not a blur, that's teleportation to the casual observer, okay? They're just there, there, in an instant. No movement, but, when we see the Flash depicted in like TV shows and stuff, we actually see him moving along. He's not moving at light speed. There's various because if the, everything is frozen and not moving and is moving around or everything's frozen, that's much closer to light speed in that comparison. Okay, but still, even if they're able to like move at like a few hundred kilometers an hour or even faster, that's crazy. That's nuts fast. And it would affect the weapons you're using in a fairly significant way because remember how we were talking about you need some measure of durability to handle the uh, these in insane levels of super speed that your arm would be destroyed? Well... The weapons you're using aren't really indestructible unless they're made out of a superhuman material and they exist in fantasy settings, adamantium, mithril, all that stuff. But um, all right, so that's there to be remembered. But if we're just talking about general weapons and now someone is able to move at such speed, and of course, again, tangential powers, they have the strength to accelerate the weapons to the same level that they're moving. Wow, like depending on what you hit, you could destroy your, the weapon you're using very easily, very quickly. Now, if it's just a regular person, clothing and stuff like that, like, and you know, doing a strike at insanely superhuman speed, it'll cut through huge amounts. But as soon as you come into contact with something that is stronger than the sword, and it doesn't need to be necessarily be a stronger material, but the mass it has and the resistance is able to have because of its size, if that is able to overcome the material strength of the weapon itself, it's going to bend or snap or any number of things. And we've seen swords snap, striking things like bone and stuff on the internet generally, from people with regular strength, regular speed, and with a regular sword. And so if you're using a sword, at this huge insane speed, it's really hard for me to see it surviving very well. And the other thing is, like, sword blades are thin, okay? They have a lot, they're flexing them. They're really strong in comparison to general use, an average human. But if you're ramping up this analysis to someone with super speed, the sword blade, I think, is just too fragile. It's not going to survive. It Again, if you're just hitting regular people, it would be devastating beyond belief. Crazy. And if you have a super, you know, magical material, even better. Sword would be great. But if it's not, if you don't have things, those, you know, bases covered, the sword is going to break and get damaged pretty darn quickly. As soon as you strike too much and you slash the person in two and you hit a wall, you hit something metal, or if you hit someone who has superhuman durability of some kind, the sword's gone. 
All right, the blade is too thin, too fragile. Now, this also applies with thrusting kind of weapons because a lot of the thrusting kind of weapons have pretty, like in comparison to the world we're talking about with superhuman speed, they can be quite fragile, like a rapier. Now, daggers, they'd be able to handle a bit more because their weight is more condensed, but still they're pretty darn thin. And uh, so spear, depending, like if you can feel that you've hit something that's too strong and stop the thrust to the point where you're not gonna push through and break it, okay, you might be able to save your weapon. You could kind of do that with cuts as well, but it seems like with a cut, you're more committed with a super speed thing and you're aiming to you know, slash right through it, and that seems probably the case with thrusting as well. I really feel that if you're wanting to keep you know, your weapon uh, intact for as long as possible and you have superhuman speed, you might actually revert back to the weapon we had discounted from the beginning, and that's a blunt weapon. It would produce insane levels of force. Now, the advantage of a blunt weapon, and granted this does apply with someone who's twice as fast, but so much more so with like, you know, a hundred times faster, okay, is that the force is dispersed over a greater area. Twice as fast, you would get marginal effect, okay, you could do still devastating damage, but that damage is used far more efficiently and devastating if that force is focused onto a single edge. But remember, you have such greater force just available over and on top of what is needed for the comparison we we're just talking about with double speed with like 100 times speed uh, like you have that force to waste and more to disperse it over a larger area which means the impact location could be devastating and because you're striking with something that's using blunt force generally they're a bit more sturdy and so we're looking at something as basic as a club or a longish kind of stick. Even a quarter staff, okay? You can add the martial arts kind of fun spinny effects and all that stuff. Much, much better. And the advantage with something like a quarter staff is that you can give it far more flex. And so if you, you know, someone with like 100 times speed strikes someone so strong that generally if it's with a sword or something solid, it would snap and shatter, you could have a fairly sturdy yet flexible kind of weapon. Have you seen like, you know, the martial Martial arts bow staffs, how flexible those things can be. Now, I've seen one that it was really flexible, but it was still hard to flex. It had a lot of resistance. And so if you came up and hit someone almost at a hundred times speed, well, the weapon has far greater chances of surviving that impact now than not. It could flex out of the way instead of, you know, bashing. And the result would be kind of comical because it'd be just going on the end after you hit someone. But my goodness, would they be feeling it? And you have a far more durable weapon as a result. And once again, Again, because that impact was over a larger surface area, that means more area on the target is damaged on top. It's not cut in two, which is pretty horrible, but still pretty darn effective. So it's interesting, the best weapon that I would kind of pick for someone who has insane superhuman speed, like, you know, 100 times at least, if not more, would be a sturdy yet flexible quarter staff, okay? Something that can survive the use of such speed, you know, things. But then again, if you have super magical materials, would a quarter staff made out of an indestructible material be better than a sword? That's indestructible. Well, Arachi, that really depends. The sword can do far more devastating damage. Cutting something in half can cause just in huge amounts of damage. Like that's that's really serious. And so in that regard, I think the invincible sword is still better than uh, something with blunt force. But if you take away that invincibility of the weapon itself, you're going to go with something that has flex, that can survive the impact, or has better chances to. Blunt force, still got huge amounts of force, and as a quarter staff, that's that's pretty cool. It's not not a kind of a conclusion you would think, you know, intuitively, but it has all the advantages. They're all there. So what do you think would be the best weapons for someone with double speed and insane speed, like 100 times? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And of course, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So until that time, farewell.